Look, I'm here trying to make a collection of creatures based off of various STEM topics, and while I have drawn well over a hundred designs by now, I may try to make my own game with these guys on Godot, as I had an idea that would greatly change the gameplay. Now, I'll be going over major parts of my gameplay in future videos, because I'm still coding the game, but developing a game in this genre really made me sit down and think about various mechanics one at a time. And recently, I stumbled upon poison in games. It's been a popular status condition, but in the largest creature collecting franchise Pokemon, poison is also an elemental type that would represent a whole subsection of their creature designs. And this poison type would be adopted by many other games of the genre as well. But should I keep having a poisonous type? Well, let's talk about the poison type and condition, both mechanically and aesthetically, before talking about my own project, as I'll show off another one of my Zodiac Beasts before the end of the video. So hope you don't get sick of me today, because we'll be asking, does poison work as a type? You know what's kind of interesting? While poison as status condition, or even as an attack, has been in role-playing games for quite a long time, many of the games before or around Pokemon's release didn't have a poisonous elemental type for the creatures. Maybe except for Digimon where there was a virus type to be a third of the data virus vaccine triangle that nearly every Digimon is attributed with. Please feel free to correct me but I haven't really seen a poisonous type in a game that predates Pokemon. So I think it's at least fair to talk about how this poison type is handled in Pokemon as it's also the most common type in their first games. So apparently, poison has been one of the weaker types in Pokemon, especially in the first few generations, as the type chart hasn't been too kind to it. Poison is resisted by four types and only effective on grass and bug. Wait, uh, in Gen 2, they updated it so it's only strong to grass, and the new steel type is immune to poison? I mean, it thematically makes sense, but new immunities have often been used to nerf previously strong types, but poison wasn't even doing so well. But in Generation 6, poison can now hit fairies super effectively, which would be the main reason for its rise in viability, as fairy has proved to be a strong type. So poison became more popular as it counters it offensively and defensively. Speaking of the defensive, on paper poison started off pretty bad, but it ended up only having two weaknesses and many resistances. However, the weaknesses were specifically to psychic and ground types, where the former has previously been the strongest type in the game, and the latter is a pretty offensive type overall. But credit where credit is due, poison seems to have a lot of resistances to go well with the poison status condition. So what is the poison condition all about? Across multiple games and other media, poison is a slow killer, damage over time. In the first four generations, this was actively felt in Pokemon's overworld, as Pokemon with this condition continue to get hurt as you walk around. This adds to the urgency of the situation, as you're trying to find the most optimal path back to a Poke Center to cure your party members. The same damage over time concept is why I mentioned in a past video that this poison condition is popular among stall teams, who throw out the condition and try their best to survive as the poison finishes off their opponent. The poison condition comes in two flavors in Pokemon. Regular poison just ticks off an eighth of the max HP every turn, while badly poisoned Pokemon lose a higher percentage of health after every turn eventually outpacing most healing methods unless the poison is cured or they switch out to reset the amount of damage poison does. So yeah, the poison condition is popular in stall, and it's why I thought it would be more popular in a singles format where the matches last longer. However, this poison condition has been made more accessible by Pokemon over the years. Previously, while you had a chance to poison the enemy through certain moves and abilities, the ways to badly poison the enemy were very limited. Most likely due to how these status conditions usually stick to the Pokemon in and out of battle. Allow me to go more in depth specifically on the status move Toxic Spikes, which set up a hazard that trigger every time a non-airborne nor protected Pokemon enters the battle. 
these spikes are stackable with one layer just poisoning the enemy and two layers badly poisoning them. Also when a poison type Pokemon touches these spikes, the toxic spikes are removed. Now the main issue with these two flavors of poisoning is that once a Pokemon is regularly poisoned, unless they somehow lose that condition, they are shielded from being badly poisoned. So while the badly poison condition often guarantees the Pokemon to be knocked out eventually, regular poison is often easier to manage and outheal, making it much less desirable. And making toxic spikes really need two layers to make them formidable. And compare that to the status move Toxic, which directly applies a badly poison status. Toxic is a very effective move to shut down long games, so there's a lot of Pokemon who can learn this move, not just poison types, but Pokemon did give a buff to the poison type again in the 6th generation by making their toxic specifically never miss, while everyone else has only a 90% accuracy of the move. Dang, with this much love towards the poison type, you'd expect their pseudo legendary to be part poison. Wait, they're called powerhouse Pokemon now? Uh, Alright. But with the new generations, there have been more and more abilities and moves that can poison or badly poison the opponent. Why does G-Max Maloder only apply regular poison? They should be badly poisoned! You're blasting them with a metric ton of trash! But this is how we see poison types like Glamora appear in VGC, as her toxic debris ability applies a layer of toxic spikes with every physical hit, which does introduce the poison condition more often, and chip damage is still valuable. We start seeing poison more in the campaign as well. The latest generation's DLC had a group of Pokemon that has a chance to deal the badly poison status when dealing any attack, not just contact moves. And this group was also tied to Pecherun, the poisonous mythical of the generation. Too bad this group is rare to see in VGC, and Pecherun isn't even legal yet. But speaking of the campaign... Let's start talking about the aesthetic that the poison type could bring. Elemental types in this genre each set a distinct flavor and tone. It's surprising that many other games around Pokemon's release didn't have a poisonous type, but it's less surprising to see that many other games afterwards having one. Because, well, it's a fun aesthetic. Sludge and Ooze make a distinct vibe that can certainly make enough of a theme to be an element. Now, Pokemon might have initially made this type to be kind of a villainous type, as many of the grunts of the antagonistic Team Rocket wield this type, not just in the game, but also in the anime, because this is the type that specifically opposes life, like pollution and venom, without the context of living beings, is just another mixture of chemicals. Maybe this is why poison sucks so bad in the first generation, as you're expected to mow these grunts down, but yeah, there are a ton of fun shapes you can do with this type, from dribbling slimes to pointy spines. Looking at designs in other games, there are also fungi, candy, and flasks. So I agree that poison works pretty well as an element, with a strong aesthetic and even a defining gameplay style due to the status condition. But it's gonna take some balancing to make them more engaging in my game. So what do I want to do in Stemma? my stem-based creature collector. Well, let's start with the condition. While I find damage over time to be very interesting, I do kind of want to avoid passive gameplay styles as much as I can at this stage. So there are two choices here. I could make the poison condition stack, where being poisoned more and more would lead to greater damage over time. Or the one that I'm more inclined to do is to make poison less about damage over time, but more about marking their target, where yes, the condition does damage a fraction of max HP every turn, but Toxic skills now do double the damage. In fact, what if my Toxic type is barely effective against any type because any stamina with the poison condition would temporarily gain a weakness to it, and that's the thing. I want to make my status conditions expire after a few turns. This is due to an attribute that I want to implement one day called Chemo Synthetic, where health is gained after every turn, but the amount is boosted when they are poisoned. This is in contrast to the Photosynthetic attribute, where Sunny Weather boosts the amount. So yeah, 
As fun as this all sounds, I've always been pondering on my type system as a whole. I have this urge to radically change what I currently have, you know? Like, I tell myself that I'll sit down one day with all my designs and try to determine what types I really want to have, but the thing is I feel like having too few types could make the game feel too simple. But on top of this urge, I once received a comment by a user named Starbean7679 who suggested that my skills should be split between physical and chemical skills to reflect the difference between physical and chemical changes. I found this to be highly intriguing to the point that this is the terminology that I use in my code. However, I have been mulling over the implications of such a split. As opposed to the more fantastical physical special split of Pokemon, and the more illustrative melee and range split of Cassette Beasts, physical and chemical changes are less visually coded. For example, having a freeze ray to freeze your opponent might look special and ranged, but freezing is a physical change because ice is still water, just in a different state of matter. This also means sound-based moves would count as physical as no chemical bonds are being changed, but maybe this can be a learning experience so that we can get more familiar with real-life physical and chemical changes. However, when it comes to my type conundrum, it's hard to think of both physical and chemical skills for each type. Like, Forta type is supposed to be about strength. What would the chemical Forta skill be like? Building up lactic acid? On the opponent? I'm going to have to get creative. For Toxa at least, I was thinking of having a difference between poison versus venom, where venom has to be physically injected like a poisonous bite to release chemicals that would deal damage through the poison condition, while poison is considered to be chemical damage as it could be immediately absorbed through the skin. I'll be wrestling with my type chart and this physical chemical split as development continues, but to close off today's video, allow me to show you another Zodiac Beast. Lately I've been ending my videos with explaining one of my Zodiac Beasts, which I drew a few years ago. But I want to clarify that these guys aren't planned to be in my Stemma game. If they ever do get added, they'll probably be their own chapter, but again, I am not guaranteeing anything, especially when I'm still coding the first area of my game. With that said, while my zodiac beasts are loosely based off the zodiac symbols, they still cover some niche science topics. With today's zodiac beast being cancer, let's see, if you are a cancer, you will have a nice day today. Why is it called cancer anyways? Now, cancer as a disease is a sensitive topic, so if you want to, you can skip to this timestamp. So apparently cancer actually just means crab, and the ancient Greek physician Hippocrates saw a malignant tumor and said it looked like a crab. Later on, Roman and Greek physician Galen would call it onkos, which means swelling. That's why cancer specialists are called oncologists. Cancer is when some abnormal cells, often from one's own body, grows uncontrollably. When they are in one place, they can be a benign tumor, as they don't bother other parts of the body. But if they spread, they are called malignant, as they could start growing tumors all over the body. While exposure to radiation that could damage the cell's DNA can make cancer more likely, something could go wrong every time a cell divides, where various cells in the body regularly divide every day. That's why our immune systems are equipped with natural killer cells that patrol and destroy anything abnormal, including cancer cells. But sometimes the natural killer cells might not recognize that the cancer cells need to be dealt with, leading those cells to build up into a tumor. Treating a tumor can be done in multiple ways, but the issue is trying to completely stamp out the cancer so that those cancer cells don't grow back. Like, chemotherapy aims to kill all dividing cells for a while, and since cancer cells are growing uncontrollably, they're dividing more, and hopefully would die off quickly before the rest of the body does. Because again, healthy bodies also regularly make new cells. If successfully done, the immune system can clean out the rest of the cancer, or else the cancer might come back again as a recurring case. There's a lot of research going on to combat cancer, in treatment, prevention, and importantly trying to reduce cancer recurrence. And often this microbiological research 
is done through petri dishes. So yeah, today's creature is based more off of the petri dish instead, which aren't really niche at all, but they sure are interesting. There are many environments to grow cells in. Could be bacteria, fungi, and even animal cells. Some also contain some kind of jelly or medium to feed the cells. There's a lot of use cases for these controlled environments, such as identifying species, growing cells with certain DNA, and to observe other behavior. So here's Cantry, whose a petri dish experiment gone wrong as a collection of different colonies have joined together to become one mind. I think this is one of the first Zodiac Beasts I made, so this was before I wanted them to cover niche topics, but I don't know. I do like the design I ended up with. And please, as always, check out the description for more videos that go over today's topics in more detail. Poison is such a recognizable condition that they can aesthetically be an element of their own. You know, I once considered having a Mixa type instead where Mixa stands for slime, but it's a lot less recognizable than Toxa. My main issue was that the damage over time personality might make Toxa types try to play more passively. So I'm trying to flip the script by making the condition call for more attacks. So does poison work as a type? I think it does. But how do you feel about having a poisonous type? Should they be thrown out? Or is the goo too good to remove? Leave a comment below. I'll have more videos about various mechanics that I'm stumbling across as I make my own creature collector. So if any of that interests you, you can subscribe. I already got a whole playlist here going over the creatures I made for Stemma. So check it out. I want to thank my Patreon supporters for directly supporting me, but you can support me for free by just liking and sharing this video. Alright, thank you for watching till the end, and I hope, cancer or not, you can remind yourself that you're a strong person.